So hello everyone and welcome back or to my channel. My name is Erica and today I will be doing my July update for my makeup rehab series. If you don't know what this is, I basically am kind of following It's Just Steph and Emily and Max's layout where they have a beauty bank which is basically a number of credits that you have for the entire year and you can buy as many makeup products as you would like as long as you still have the credits for it from that bank and every time you use up a product or maybe hit pan on a product you get credits back so that's what my makeup rehab is like and also I do empties and purchases and kind of short reviews and thoughts throughout this video and I have a separate bank for most of my makeup products and then also for eyeshadows it's separate because otherwise I would just be buying a ton of eyeshadow palettes and I actually did declutter a lot this month so let's just get into this video I'm sweating because I just went out for a walk so I'm extra glowy today so the first thing I'm going to do is talk about my declutters before I forget so I asked a friend if she wanted some of my makeup products and she said yes so the first thing I'm decluttering is the Wet n Wild Coffee Cat Palette. No, I would never declutter that. The first thing that I'm decluttering is the Wet n Wild Coffee Cat Lip Gloss in the shade La Vida Mocha. This is what it looks like. This looks horrible on my lips. It looks like I'm from the 90s. It's way too pale for my lips. My lips are very pigmented. I don't know if you could tell, but. I'm wearing a lip gloss right now, so it might be a little bit harder to tell, but I do not like this. It just looks bad on me, and this one is way more coffee-scented than the other one I have from the same line, which I will show you. I actually have this one on today, which is called just, no, Deja Brew. I like this one a lot more than this one, and so I'm just going to throw this one away. I don't think anyone would like this but I do like this one unfortunately Wet n Wild is like on the list of brands that I'm probably not going to be purchasing from in the future until they slow down on the releases again because I've noticed that they are starting to become more fast fashion which is a shame because I do really like their formula but I already have a lot of products from them and I just really want to slow down on my purchases so like now would be the time to boycott them but you know, anytime is a good time to stop being fast fashion. Okay, and then I have two Too Faced palettes. This is the Too Faced Let's Play. I wanted this so bad, and it just sucks. The formula is so bad. I even, like, repressed some shades into here. Mine's very messy from the repressing, but I just hated the formula. And every time I see this, I'm just like, oh, but the packaging is so cute. But I never reach for this. I think it's been like a whole year that I haven't reached for this, at least. And so I'm just actually going to be throwing this away. Like, I know the packaging is really cute, but... Damn, I never reach for this. Ugh. I'm like having second thoughts about this packaging, but like... No, I could always get like a print of this if I think it's so cute. Um, or like, you know, draw my own jewelry box or something to look like this packaging, but I am just going to be throwing this away. By throwing this away, I mean like recycling it at some recycle program. I'm looking at a giant bag of makeup products that I've been saving to take to some place to TerraCycle it. And then, surprise, <laughs> this is the Too Faced Christmas Coffee Palette. Mine. My first one came shattered, and then I got this one. It's barely used, but I really only wanted it for this green shade in here. And I have that green shade so many times over in other palettes. Like, I have it in my... Let me see. Yeah, I have it in this palette, which is the Too Faced Major Love palette, which I like a lot more. You can see there's a green in there. There's, like, shades in here that are more unique to my collection than the shades in here. So I figured I would just declutter it while it's still new because I'm not going to keep a palette just for one shade. I say that but then I have this one palette that I mostly keep for one shade because it is a shade that every time I wear it I get compliments and that is the same eyeshadow that I'm going to wear when I get married. So anyways, yeah, uh, decluttering that and 
most of these eyeshadow palettes have a home unless I say I'm throwing it away because it is just so bad. And then I'm decluttering my Wet n Wild Always Naked palette. I was really only keeping this for one shade, which was the one in the top corner right here. It looks the most used. And then I thought this was going to be very similar to the shade I was referring to, the one that I think is very beautiful, and I cannot find a dupe for it. Um, oh, the names are not on the back of this, but let me find that one. So the shade that I'm talking about that is like my absolute favorite and I would never get rid of this palette for is this one right here. Yeah, very well loved and hopefully, I mean I'm sure there's still going to be eyeshadow left in it by the time I get married, but I was really hoping that the shade in here was going to be very similar to it because on the website it looked similar, but they are not the same. This, the one from the Coffee Cat is just much superior to the one from the Always Naked palette. They're very comparable, but I can notice a difference. So as you can see, so I'm just going to keep the Coffee Cat palette and then declutter this one. And then I'm going to be decluttering Norvina. Mine doesn't really look that used. I got this for half off and then I used it for a bit. I do like this palette, but I'm realizing that I'm not going to use every single shade. Like, for example, Dreamer and Base are too light for me. Soul does not look good on me. Uh, let's see. I'm not going to use Volatile or Passion or Drama, like the darker colors, uh, because I feel like they look a little bit strange on me. And so that's already a lot of the shades and I know someone else would get use out of this. Like I said, I already have homes for these so I'm going to be giving these away to my friends and then she's going to be giving some to her friend. And I'm just glad that this is getting me home. I'm also not going to be buying from ABH because the original founder, Anastasia, of Anastasia Beverly Hills. I believe her name is Anastasia Sore. Not sure if I said that right, but that's how I've been hearing people say it. She has expressed support for Russia, so no more ABH. And I'm surprised people are still like, oh my god, ABH is so good, I'm gonna buy from them. Like they just totally forgot that. Which to me is very astounding how like news like that can just can just get swept under the rug so easily. I think in this day and era, we don't just live and we can't be like, oh, you know, it's just makeup, don't think too much about it because, like, it's not just makeup. Your money is going towards something. Stop buying from ColourPop because my money was going towards fast fashion, which in turn was causing, like, you know, fast fashion is not the greatest for the environment. It's actually pretty terrible for the environment. And like ColourPop also does the, the non-biodegradable glitters, which can cut your eye and a lot of people don't seem to know that or, and it doesn't like degrade that fast. So there's like a lot of microplastics that end up in the waters and fish eat them. And then eventually it just ends up affecting us all over again. So yeah, it's not just as simple as Makeup is just makeup. There's like politics and the environment and everything. I once, like, it is nice to not have to think about that stuff, but I just feel morally obligated to, to, to know where my money is going, you know? Okay, now for the empties, and there's quite a bit of skincare in here, so I'm going to get that out of the way first. We have, of course, my Muji, oh this is backwards, cut cotton pads. Japan, I found out recently, is open for travel, so maybe I'll go later this year, but I'm very excited. If there's a quarantine period, I ain't going because I don't want to waste my vacation days not doing anything. Even though it's Japan, it would be awesome to just even be there. I would rather not waste my time, like, just sitting around. So... Anyways, Muji's Japanese, <laughs> that's why I said that. And this is a pack of 180 cotton pads. These are my favorite. They are really, like, they're unbleached and they don't have, like, a trim around it. So it's basically just, like, a cotton pad. No bells or whistles or anything like that. And it works really well. So that's why I get them. And they're only $2. It says $2.50 here, but... I no, it says 350 here, 
And then I have this Trader Joe's Hand and Body Cream, Moroccan, made with Moroccan Argan Oil. It's fragrance free, moisturizing, and hydrating. It is not moisturizing. <laughs> so I feel like, com especially compared to their body butter, this feels so thin, but I bought it and I like was shaking it really hard to get every last bit out but as you can see I did not get every last bit out I just gave up after it would not come out anymore so I would say that if you don't have extremely dry skin on your body this might work for you especially in the summer but because I have dry skin which is really weird because my face skin is extremely oily this would be good for you and then oh this is not really a Project Pan spoiler, I already rolled it out. This is the Pareto Centella Green Level Unscented Sunscreen, SPF 50 plus PA plus 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 plus. Yeah, no more. <laughs> Just four pluses. This was the Controversial Sunscreen. It says 50 SPF, but it's actually 15 SPF. I have never gotten sunburnt using this. I wish they still made this. I would still buy it even if it was SPF 15 because... This is better than the sunscreen I'm currently using, which is the Glow Recipe sunscreen. And this doesn't smell like anything. It's just a really nice sunscreen if you don't get sunburned that easily. But if you do, well, I mean, this is discontinued now, but I would not recommend using it if you get sunburned easily because it is not giving you the sun protection that you would expect from the label. But I really missed this and it kept my oils at bay too. This was just such a nice sunscreen and I'm sad they discontinued it. I finished one of these like two months ago. This is the Olaplex Hair Perfector number three. This is basically like a mask and you're supposed to leave it on for at least 10 minutes. I try to leave it on for an hour because this is expensive and I would like to get the full effect. Also on the website it did say that people do see better results the longer they leave it in. So usually on Sundays or the day that I am going to be using my whole Olaplex routine, which I only do once a week because it is expensive, I will put this on and then do a face mask and then play one round of it's called Age of Mythology. It's a really, really old game, and I suck at it, so it usually takes me an hour to get through one round against bots, so then afterwards I just shower. So that's how I like to use this, and this is my second bottle I've gone through, and I have, I think, two more. So I think I, hmm... I think I bought one to use and then my friend told me that she gets a discount so then I didn't have to pay full price and then she gave me hers which was like half used because she didn't need it anymore because she has virgin hair and well my hair is not virgin as you can see it's like from here down it's been bleached and dyed and then so this must be the half she gave me <laughs> because I just opened a new bottle recently. I really like this. I feel like it does make a difference, especially now that I have a lot more split ends forming and I need a haircut. But I'm trying to grow my hair out for the wedding and then afterwards I'm going to cut it, but not too short because I found out why my boyfriend wants me to leave my hair long. It's because if I cut it too short, then I'm going to look like um, I think he said every older Asian lady, which was kind of funny, but I didn't know that's why he didn't want me to cut my hair to, like, <laughs> funny and stupid at the same time. Okay, and then I finished another Then I Met You Living Cleansing Balm, and the last time I finished this was in May or something, so... I am a little bit shocked at how fast I go through these, especially for how much these cost. I think these cost like $36 or $38. They are not cheap. So I've gone through not just one, oh, but three of them. So these are the minis. I got them before I even got this one, which is disgusting because it's been in my bathroom longer. These are the best cleansing balms I've ever used, but I just put in a new cleansing balm 
from Key Soul Care into my bathroom, so we'll see if I still say that after this. I'm hoping I like that one more than this because it's more affordable and it's more available locally. Like, I did see Key Soul Care at my local Target. Not tar Target. My, my local Ulta. But I really like this cleansing balm. And these little ones retail for $6, but I got them for free in, like, a little baggie. And I did use it when I was traveling, but I noticed that... It didn't look like it was going to hold much longer, like I had to use it up soon because the ingredients in here are... They look like ingredients you can eat, to be honest, so I don't think they were going to last too long. If I had like waited maybe a few more months, I wouldn't have been able to use them anymore, considering their age. But I cannot say enough good things about this. My skin feels so soft, so clean after, and it is very expensive though, so... You, I use a lot less of this than my original cleansing balm, which is the Benelico one. That one is good, but this one is better. I finally finished my Origins Original Skin Retexturing Mask with Rose Clay. This is from the Ulta 21 Days of Beauty sale in 2021, so their October sale. And I opened up the other charcoal mask I bought from Origins just last night. So I like to use this every Sunday-ish, like plus or minus a day or two. No. Yeah, every Sunday or if I don't wash my hair on Sunday, it would be Monday or Tuesday. So whenever I wash my hair with Olaplex, I would use this because it's part of my skincare routine. This mask had like little something in it. It felt like sand to exfoliate your face so as you were applying it and washing it off it would exfoliate your face physically but every time I use a clay mask I use a chemical exfoliant first anyways because it peels all the like the skin at the surface off and then I'm left with you know less dead skin even though I know skin is technically already dead but I'm left with like less hardened skin and like more fresh soft skin. That sounded so disgusting. My face is not cr like that crusty. In fact, I don't think it's very crusty at all. But anyways, it would make the mask more effective because it's actually touching your fresh skin. So this one was extra effective and it made my skin extra soft. I didn't notice a difference when I used the other one last night that it wasn't as soft as this, but I don't think it's a good idea in general to exfoliate your face so much. This is the last skincare product. This is the Trader Joe's Coconut Ultra Moisturizing Hand Cream. I think I got this two years ago around the holidays with another one. I think it was avocado, and I can't remember the other one. But I do not like coconut. So this was a struggle to use up, but this worked really well with one of the soaps I had, which I used up and then realized that I was probably allergic to it. So I've stopped using it since, but this is just like the regular hand cream, but scented coconut. You cannot get this any time of the year. You have to get it towards the holidays, but I would just recommend getting the the full size Trader Joe's hand cream, it's much cheaper and it doesn't smell as bad as that. Well, I guess if you really like coconuts you would like it, but I don't really like coconuts so I didn't thoroughly enjoy it. It's effective but did not like the scent. And one last thing that's not really skincare but I wouldn't say it's exactly makeup either. I used up a brush, yes. This is, <laughs> it fell apart. So this is the e.l.f. eyeshadow brush. And can I just say that the e.l.f. brush quality has deteriorated significantly since I first started buying from this? I swear to you, this is not the oldest e.l.f. eyeshadow brush I have. The oldest one that I have is at least five, I think, five years old because I've had it since Mmm, is it older than that? I've had it since I went to college. And I think this one is from a few years ago because I have stopped buying from e.l.f. for about two or three years. And so this is definitely not from then. But I've noticed the newer brushes that, I've, that I have from them 
are just terrible and they fall apart like this so this came apart after I washed it which is you know really frustrating because I already washed it and it's a clean brush but yeah getting rid of this because it <laughs> fell apart like I said I don't have any brush recommendations like I don't know where to get my brushes from now on because they're either very expensive or they're from a brand that I am not really willing to buy from because fast fashion it's either like a moral dilemma or a price dilemma so I think I'm just not going to buy as many brushes from now on I usually buy eyeshadow brushes a lot not other brushes so anyways Moving on to the makeup products, I have this Persona Cosmetics eyeliner. It was in my project pan. I decided to stop using it. This is the little nub that I have left. And it was very difficult for me to use towards the end. So I decided not to use it. I did really like this at the beginning, but it's kind of hard to sharpen. Like I've, I know it's not the sharpener because I've gone through three different ones trying to figure out what was the best for this. And so I'm just going to declutter this. It's already like at a very small nub and it's hard to even use on my eyes. I like the formula. I don't really like how it's hard to get it sharp. And so when I do a wing, instead of going this way, like how I like to do it, I have to flick it out, which makes it harder to get an even wing on both sides. And I have a mole on this side, so it's already hard enough to get an even wing so goodbye and plus on top of that persona cosmetics i've read reviews that they don't treat their employees that well so i'm not going to be buying from them which is sad because it's an indie brand and then i have this heroin make long and curl mascara advanced film i love this brand it is the brand kiss me they make the best mascaras if you have barely existent lashes and like monolids like really oily monolids because these mascaras are truly waterproof and they make your lashes look great unfortunately it is quite difficult to remove so you will probably need a mascara remover to remove it but to me it's worth it except this one i will not be buying this tube again this is as you can see the packaging usually corresponds with the color that's in the tube for this brand and this is rose brown what i did not know is that if you put on colored mascara your eyelashes will get tinted so i didn't realize that this would tint my lashes red <laughs> so the first time or not the first time i used it but like after a few times of using it i realized that my lashes were red and if you've seen demon slayer the I just am in a wee mood today. So if you've seen Demon Slayer, which is a very popular anime slash manga, there's this character called Akaza and his face looks like a basketball and no one can tell me otherwise. He has red lashes and the first time or when I noticed that my lashes are red when I looked in the mirror, I originally thought it was eyeshadow fallout and I was like, damn it. But then I looked closer and I was like, it, it's the mascara, it's not the eyeshadow. I look just like him. He has red lashes. So I used this many times and now it's not really length, not really voluminizing my lashes. Even though this is long and curl, the long and curl formula is usually more voluminous than the vol volume mascara. Basically this mascara was not working anymore after I've had this open for since um, I think January or February. So it's about time anyways. And I will not be buying this again. I will also not be buying colored mascara for a while because I do not like the way it looks on me. But it's a good formula, just don't like the color. So that was all my empties. I only had two makeup empties, which were my Persona Cosmetics 24 hour waterproof liner in brown and the Heroin Make Long and Curl mascara in rose brown. So June was my birth month. I mean, it's still technically June, but June is my birth month, so I did not buy makeup for myself. I bought fragrance. So I got a sample of the Clean Reserve in the scent Lush Fleur, and I really liked it. So I decided that I was going to buy the full-size bottle for my birthday 
no matter what the price was. So it retails for $98 for the full size, like three fluid ounce bottle. And I told my brother because he was asking me, what do you want for your birthday? And because I had gotten something for him earlier that year, I bought him an OLED switch, which was, I don't know if it still currently is very high in demand. It's like always sold out, but I bought him one earlier this year because it was at my local Target and I was able to get one for him. That thing was like $400, so I didn't feel bad about asking him to get me something because I had already spent $400 on him for no reason, so my mom insisted that he get me something. So I told him like I wanted either a Sephora gift card or an Ulta gift card, and then he's my younger brother, so he ended up getting me both. He got me like a $100 gift card to Sephora and then a $100 gift card to Ulta and on both of them it was an e-gift card he wrote something along the lines of happy birthday old man dingus so siblings anyways I ended up using it to purchase this fragrance which is the clean reserve Lush Fleur. I'm like always blanking out on the scent name. This is huge and also actually it was only... Wait, no, I didn't use... Let me think about it. I didn't actually use the gift card, never mind, but I just wanted to tell that story because I think something in here I did buy with it. Uh, anyways, so this went on sale before my birthday. It was half off, so instead of being $98, it was only $49. So I decided to pick this up, and I was also looking at the Pat McGrath blush palette from the holidays, but it literally went out of stock as I was checking out, so I was like, you know what, never mind. So I picked this up because, like I said, I really wanted it, and it, w it just seemed like destiny because it was half off, and I was going to buy it at a hundred, like almost a hundred anyway, so then I just picked it up for 49 and then I also picked up this set from Clean. It is the Clean Classic Rollerball Layering Set. Man, I said that's so ratchet. It, it retails for $20, or I mean it costs $20, but it retails for $50. So it comes with soft laundry, pure soap, warm cotton, rain, and flower fresh. I have not opened either one because I still have the sample of the Clean Fresh that I haven't used up and that sample is lasting me for a long time so I feel like I will not be buying fragrances for a long time. Also with that order because it was for my birthday, I picked up a Clean Reserve Radiant Nectar. I hope this is like a sprayer because if it's not- oh it's a roller ball, never mind. I forgot. I did open this. This was a 100 point perk. It's tiny, look at it. It's so cute. I don't know how big this is. I wish it would say. But I'm going to assume that it's about 0.1 fluid ounces because these are 0.17 fluid ounces. And then I also got the Sol de Janeiro Beja Floor Elastic Cream. I don't know. But this is the one that smells like flowers supposedly. This one was like a free sample if you used a code. Oh, there's a seal on it. I can't smell through it. But I'm not going to break the seal because I would rather take this with me on vacation or something to use. And I don't want to break the seal. But I'm assuming it smells good because it has... I did want to purchase this instead of the one I actually got. But the other, the one I bought, the big size that I bought in either last month's makeup rehab video or the month before, it was for specifically for keratosis pilaris or KP, which I have. It's basically like chicken skin, and this was not. But I like the scent of this more than that, based off of this description. But I do like the KP version too. That one smells good as well. And then also part of my order, I did pick up the Tatcha present. I remember checking out earlier today, I was like, why can't I redeem my birthday present? And then when I was about to film this video, I looked and I was like, oh, I already redeemed it. So this is the Tatcha Rice Wash. with It comes with the soft cream cleanser 
and the dewy skin cream and a sample of the primer which I'm not counting because it's just like a little sample size so let's open it and see because I have not opened this yet I always like how they package the birthday presents so this is what the cream cleanser looks like and then this is Oh, this is for dry skin. I do not have dry skin. The complete opposite. Okay, and then the liquid silk canvas, which I really, really like. So I'm going to probably save this for vacation because I don't know. I'm hoping that we can have our wedding and our honeymoon towards the end of this year. So. Yeah, this would be great for wherever we're going. I want to go to Japan, but like I said earlier, if we have to quarantine, then I would rather go somewhere where we don't have to quarantine. Like maybe Taiwan or uh, Singapore or Hawaii. I have not been to Singapore or Taiwan. Okay, and then from Ulta, I also picked up this palette which is the Tartlet Blush and Bloom and I know what you might be thinking but you're probably not but I said many times a long time ago that I did not want to buy from Tarte because they had this social media post which was like it was kind of not kind of it was racist towards Asians and it was like a stupid meme and they blamed it on an intern and when I told my brother about it he was like, that actually happens a lot more than you think it would. So I was like, okay, fine, I believe you because, you know, people are stupid sometimes. So I was like, okay, fine, I will give Tarte another go. So I did buy this palette. I picked this up after the Pat Cheek palette went out of stock. So this comes with three shades in Petunia, Wild Rose, and Tulip. So. The reason why I picked up more blushes now is because a lot of my blushes do not show up on my cheeks. I'm not wearing it today. I'm wearing the Bare Minerals, the bronzer in Kiss of Rose. So I think I put too much on my cheeks to be honest, but I would just say it's from being out in the sun. I bought this in the hopes that I could use it year round because there is a darker shade, a medium shade, and a lighter shade. and. They're all colors that I would use. The picture that I'm seeing on this camera is not matching what I'm seeing in real life, probably because of the lighting and the way the camera captures the light. So I'm giving Tarte another go. Hopefully they don't do anything stupid again. I'm, uh, I guess I should say this also, but I'm also, I've also chosen to start buying from Fenty again. But yeah, anyways. Okay, so moving on to presents that I got. I will talk about the makeup one first because there's only two things in here. So I, my friend asked me what I wanted for my birthday and last year, or not last year, I think, yeah. So the year before this, she bought me Deep Throat from NARS because she thought the name was hilarious and I mean it is. And then last year she bought me the Kaja Bento Stack in Glowing Guava and Every time I use that, I really enjoy it, and I have a big fat pan and deep throat if you look at my private pan videos. And so this year she asked me what I wanted, and I said I wanted Behave from NARS because I was just on a quest for a darker blush because I was not about to use eyeshadows blush because that never works out that well. So this is what it looks like. I'm starting to wonder if this is going to show up on me because I am actually very dark this year like that triangle tan in my last video or not my last video my project pan video like on my arm is a lot worse now like it's very bad so hopefully this shows up but if not oh well I'll just use it in the fall or something when I do get more pale for like my winter coat like when I say winter coat I mean my dad used to say I was like an arctic fox or arctic rabbit where in the summer I was brown and in the winter I was white which is usually true. I do get very pale in the winter and very tan in the summer. Makes getting a proper foundation very difficult. So yeah, that's a lot of stuff to go through. I haven't filmed in a while which is exactly why this video is going to take me 
a long time to edit but I am really grateful for all the stuff that I got like I was able to buy myself perfumes and I got presents from my friends and family for my birthday and I right now am just like on this mindset of I want less stuff. Yeah, I did do a small declutter after my makeup inventory, so my eyeshadow palettes are definitely down. My lip glosses are down. My blushes are up though because I needed to get darker blushes because a lot of them were not showing up on me. I think I might need to buy a darker bronzer soon as well. I went back and recounted my beauty bank because something didn't seem right. And I just felt like I was like, I know I bought quite a few things, but I don't think that I counted the numbers right. I actually, before the start of this video, had 10 beauty bank credits, not like 4 or 2 like I thought, so I actually had 10. Which is a good thing that I didn't know this because I was really on the fence of buying the Hourglass palettes because I had gift cards. But I'm glad I didn't, so I have... Oh, shit, I forgot, okay. I have one more empty, good thing I looked at this list. This is a Project Pan spoiler, but I did use up... Ooh, I did use up a bronzer, ta-da! It's gone, she's dead. This bronzer, I feel like was older than a lot of the products in my collection. It was, I think, 11 years old, so I'm glad I got it out. I didn't own it 11 years ago, I got it from a friend who had it in a palette, and then when I looked up when the palette came out, I told her it was from like 2010, and she was just like, oh my god, don't use it, and I was like, don't worry, I'll just use it up really quick, but really quick turned into like six months, so that was not really quick. <laughs> So yeah, I actually have three empties, which is the eyeliner, the bronzer that I just showed you, and then the mascara. And then for my purchases, I have four because I'm counting the Tarte Cheek Palette as three. And then the NARS blush as one. I'm not counting my perfumes as makeup purchases. I had a starting balance of 10. I used up three, so that gave me 13. And then... I purchased four things, so that one made my beauty bank go back down to nine. So I'm seeing a pattern here, which is <laughs> using up a lot less than I'm bringing in, so I need to reverse that. And since now I have like pretty much most of the stuff that I'm going to use, the only thing I can like I could see myself getting is bronzer because. I am getting tan way more quickly this year than I was anticipating. Like, this week and last week after I finished my bronzer, I was just going through my collection and, like, trying to see which bronzer that I have would show up on my skin because it's been a struggle. <laughs> so, right now I know that Nari's Laguna will not show up, and I also know my Charlotte Tilbury will not show up, so I need to either stop using bronzer or figure out what I'm going to do. I think with bronzers, it's easier to use an eyeshadow <laughs> instead of going out and buying a bronzer, I think I'm going to have to get really creative. I did not buy any eyeshadow palettes this month, which I'm very happy about because I haven't purchased eyeshadow palettes in a while and I am decluttering quite a bit. So this drawer is not sagging as much anymore and I feel less overwhelmed when I look at it and less sad when I look at it because I don't have to see that Too Faced palette that I wasted a lot of credits on. I, did, I used points to buy it. I didn't use my own money, but I could have used it for something else. So yeah, that's everything for this update. I'm thinking of making a separate video sometime in July because it is already very late in June. Where I go over brands that I am now open to buying from again, brands I would like to buy more from, and then also brands I've changed my mind about, essentially. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in a month. Bye!